the Smoky Monkey, and we're back at it again. But this time, we're not going for a ride. Uh, we will be doing the brakes, much requested by a lot of people. I will be showing you guys how to change the brakes out on your own bikes at home and save yourself some money. But <clears throat> I will say, if you're not mechanically inclined or you don't feel comfortable or confident doing it, don't do it because brakes are very important. You need them to stop. Uh, they will save your life. So don't mess with them. Don't even take them apart. Don't touch them if you actually are not capable of doing it. So don't attack this if it's your first mechanical job you've ever done. So let me just say that little uh, disclaimer or public service announcement or whatever you want to call it. Just uh, stay safe guys, don't do anything stupid and make sure you know what you're doing. But we got the parts for the Jeep, they finally came in this week. So I got the rear yoke, new U-joint uh, and the retainer for the U-joint that holds it to the yoke. I will be installing that well, actually, I have it somewhere where it's getting installed. I'm waiting for it to get installed. As soon as it's done, we will be picking it up because I don't have the time to do it myself right now. So I took it to a shop. It's a light job. I, I paid for all the parts, so it shouldn't cost too much. And hopefully, we get it back by the end of this weekend because we've been down last weekend and now this weekend. So hopefully, we'll get back out on the trails next week and we'll cause some ruckus and get you guys some good footage and hopefully we don't get stuck as bad as we did last time because it was pretty brutal but let me pull this guy out for you guys and let's attack the brakes so here we are at the front wheel and we're not actually going to be replacing my brake pads but i will be servicing mine and i'll be lubing all the parts that need lube so i can show you guys exactly how to replace your brake pads but i'll be putting my original ones back in because they're still good so the first thing you want to do is remove these two bolts they're both 14s Once you get those off, the entire unit comes off, the whole caliper. And in here, as you see, I've got, <clears throat> and as you guys can see, I've got tons of life left on my brake pads still. But to get them out, what you're gonna have to do is remove this pin here at the bottom by removing that little split pin. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but I can't really bring it too much closer to you guys. So here, let me pick up the camera for a second. And if you guys look, there's a little split pin right in there. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver, remove that. And what that'll allow us to do is remove this pin in here. And that will let the pads free. Because as you see the top pin, they just come right off. This is what's actually retaining the pads in their place. So let me grab a screwdriver and I'll pop this out. So all you do is just pull the pin out towards yourself. And there you have it. There's your little pin. So I'm gonna set this aside. Now, this pin should be free. And depending on how old your brakes are or what kind of road conditions you guys have, this might be pretty gunked up. It might be a little bit hard to remove. So just brush it up a little bit or clean it with some brake cleaner if you guys have a brake cleaner can around and it should come out. Once you get that off, you can slide your pads right off. And there you have it. There's your two pistons and there's the clip for the pads. Now, what I'm gonna do is clean everything up with a brush inside and make sure that all the surfaces are nice and clean with no brake dust on them. So there you guys have it, nice and shiny again. And you do wanna clean off all the gunk around your pistons as well. So I'm gonna do that now with a rag and some brake cleaner. And there you guys have it. As you can see, everything is nice and shiny, nice and clean. And I got all the gunk out, especially on these surfaces here and inside here, as well as the clip. Now, I don't recommend replacing your clip. 
You will get a new clip sometimes with your brake pads. I don't recommend replacing it. The reason being, this clip is already seated well and it's already there in its place and it's doing its job well. If you clean this clip and it, you leave it there, it's going to do its job its whole entire life as long as you don't actually bend it or break it or do anything like that. If you replace the clip, you have a chance of it not seating well and not seating exactly the same way because it's not an original clip and it's possible that you can get some brake squeaking or the pads not seating exactly correct. I've had that issue happen to many people, not only on bikes, but as well on cars and anything that has a disc brake. So I'm just letting you guys know if it's in good shape, clean it and leave it. Now the next thing that you want to do is pull back these little boots and remove your sliding pin. And most people actually don't do this step, but this will help from seizing. So what you want to do, I'm not going to actually do it because mine is quite lubed, is wipe it off. Don't use any chemical, just wipe it with a cloth. Get all the gunk off. Let me get that hair out of there. Wipe all the gunk off and make sure that you apply new lubricant. So make sure you get the proper stuff. Uh, I'll actually show you guys what to use because I have it laying around. This is the stuff that I use. You don't have to use clean flow or whatever. Easy slide brake lubricant is basically what you want. It is the slider lubricant for the sliding pins. It's used for cars, for bikes, for anything with a disc brake. Make sure you do this step. It will help you in the long run, believe me. It's a very crucial maintenance step. So, once they are nice and greased, as you can see, mine are quite greased. You want to put everything back together, just like so. and seat your boots make sure to seal your boots up properly because that's what's going to prevent any gunk getting in there and that's what's going to keep the grease in there and make sure that it functions as it should and there you go so as you can see the boots are seated and everything is back in its place so the next step from here is to lube your sliding pins now i use a copper lubricant you can use a copper or an aluminum but I prefer the copper stuff and you can also do the sliding surfaces here and you want to do the pin that you're going to stick back in now not too much just a light coat because you don't want this to get on the brake pads or on your actual uh, rotor but this is just going to give you guys that little bit of lubricant and uh, less of an issue when it comes out because this is actually called anti-seize for anybody that knows what it, what it is, it's anti-seize. So basically it's going to help you guys not have any seizing or any rusting or any road dirt or anything get on there and make your pads stick and make them not slide properly. So it'll help you take them out later when you're replacing them again, but it'll also help them function better while you're riding. So clean all the anti-seize off your hands and then go ahead and stick your pads back in. And as you see, this one just wants to fall out because it doesn't have a pin in. So get your pin, slide your pin through, and then make sure you put your little split pin back in just like so now everything is seated and it is exactly as it came back off of the bike so now it's ready to go back on the bike or it's exactly as it came off the bike now it's ready to go back on the bike and one step i didn't show you guys because i'm not replacing my pads but when you put in new pads you will have a lot more meat on there and a lot more pad so what you do is you put in this pad and leave this one out, get a clamp or a pair of uh, big lock jaw uh, pliers, put a rag on this side so you don't scratch anything, and then just slowly push it back in. What this will do is seat the pistons back and give you that room to get your new pads over your disc and that way you don't have any issues actually putting it back together. So since mine is going back in with the same pads that came out, I should have no issues sliding it back on like so and now we just fit our two 14 mil bolts back in make sure to tighten everything down a 
but don't overdo it. Don't go crazy. I know there's a torque spec for this. I don't know the torque spec because I've been doing brakes for a while now, so I kind of just do it by eye, by hand, or whatever you want to call it. But there is a torque spec. Don't go crazy because if you strip these, <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. Now, once you have everything secure and everything tight, make sure that you do the most important step. I cannot stress this enough because if you hop on the bike now and you go for a spin to test it out and make sure your new pads are in there correct and everything's great, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> now, because this is not going to do anything, you have to pump it up a few times. And once you pump it up, it's going to build the pressure back up inside there because once you push it back, it's not seated against the disc anymore. You have that little bit of space that you gave yourself to get the rotor, uh, to get the caliper back on the rotor. Now you have to pump the brakes a few times and then you'll be safe to go out back on the road. So now you can see, even though I didn't pump mine that far, because I did push them in a little bit, it doesn't seat all the way to the bars. You saw the first time I pushed it, it went all the way down. So now for the other side, it's honestly the same thing. You do the exact same steps, two bolts, and then replace your pads and you're good to go. So I'm going to do the other side real quick. And then I'm going to hop over to that side and do the back for you guys. So let me bang this out because you guys already saw how this is done. And then I'll show you guys the back. So once we come around to the back of the bike, We've got a 12 millimeter right there. And then there is an Allen bolt right there, an Allen head bolt. So what I'm gonna do is remove this one and leave it that one on and just slide it up. So I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So here you can kind of just slide it right up and you don't have to remove the entire thing. You can still get your pads in, but to remove the pads, it is a little bit trickier. You have to do kind of like a locking mechanism. So this one has a flat head. So I'm gonna go grab a flat head real quick and remove this. So once you remove your little locking mechanism, it's kind of like a little cap, this little guy right here. Don't lose him. and it just kind of spins out, it's threaded in, and it's got an Allen head on it. So once you remove that little locker, you can remove your Allen head pin, and then you can actually get at your brake pads. So once again, you can see my pads are in good shape, so we're not gonna be replacing them today, but I will clean everything up and lube everything up and put it all back together so that we're ready to go and keep riding until I do have to replace them. So actually, before I grease anything, since I have an aftermarket exhaust, I don't know how it would be with the stock exhaust. It kind of gets in the way for me. So what I'm gonna do is remove the actual exhaust. There we go. So there we go. Once we have the exhaust off, we can get to this one and we'll stick this one back in just for leverage. There we go. And this one is your sliding pin. As you can see, there is some grease on the end of that. So be careful not to get it dirty. And there is your brake piston and caliper or caliper unit. And there's your piston. So. What you want to do is the same thing, clean up all your surfaces, clean up all your clips. You can see there is a clip right there as well. This right here is a clip. So clean that up, clean up all your surfaces, lube everything and put your new pads in. So let's do that now. Here we go. Grab a rag, grab some brake clean, clean off your piston. Make sure you get all the gunk off of it. Oh, sorry guys, almost knocked you off of the ledge there. But clean everything up. Give everything a nice wipe down. And then grab your brush. 
and then make sure you lube everything put a little bit of anti-seize there on all your friction surfaces or all your sliding surfaces so on this clip a little bit right there like so sticker back on very nice and then what you want to do is lube up your sliding pin and as you see I'm not putting too much just a little coating on there just to keep it from getting gunked up with road gunk and road crap and make sure that the pads keep on sliding as they should so I will leave that as it is and your sliders are this bolt in the back here and in the front you have this guy right here which you can take out and lube up the same way as you did in the front so I'll show you guys how to lube that up clean it off with a cloth don't use any chemical or anything you don't need anything and grab yourself your brake lubricant get her nice and coated but not too much because if you put too much then it kind of fills up that little gasket or that little boot that it's in all right yeah it's a boot not a gasket <laughs> sorry guys it's really hot today having brain farts all over the place but it fills up that little boot and then it doesn't quite function as it should it gets kind of uh a little bit of restriction almost as you as you can call it because of the pressure there so don't put too much put just enough and the beauty of it is you can actually take some off after so here you kind of want to spin it so that it catches that first lip so that you don't push your boot in and it stays on the outside there we go so you can see there we go it caught both sides of the boot and you want to clean all this grease off of it make sure you get all the excess grease off I had a little bit on my fingers there too clean off your hands and then wipe off the boot and if you do have extra grease inside you kind of just squeeze it out like that and it'll all come out the top so then you just kind of wipe that off and now your sliders are greased so I'll show you guys the other one real quick too. put some new lubricant on there and you're good to go so at this point what I would do if I was putting in new pads is I would take my old pad I would stick it here and I would grab a pair of pliers or some kind of a clamp C clamp Put it on and just push everything back in and what that'll do is that'll seat your piston back inside the, the caliper I was gonna say rotor <laughs> back inside your caliper and it'll push a little bit of fluid back inside the reservoir so don't be alarmed if you see the fluid rises inside the reservoir that will give you the space you need for the extra meat you have on the new pads since I am just doing a service today I don't have to worry about that I'm just going to put my pads back together the way that they came. So I'm going to grab my pads, stick them in, and now we're going to put it back together on the actual caliper on the rotor. We'll stick our pin back in. And it'll hold everything in place. Make sure to thread your pin through and seat it down and put the locker back in it and don't forget your little lock now at this point you want to seat your pads into that little groove there so as you can see, you want to get them to sit, not like this, but in that little groove. Because that's what holds your pads in place, and that's the sliding surface. Now make sure you check both sides, and then get your sliding pin back in. Now if you're at this step, and you're having trouble putting everything back together, and getting it to seat, 
move this rear slider here because sometimes it'll get caught up on here and it won't let you put the entire unit back down. So once you get everything put back where it's supposed to sit, get your slider and once you have your rear set, get the front just to lock it in so that it doesn't move around and now you're ready to tighten everything down. And now we just do this one. Same thing, don't go nuts. There you guys have it. Same thing, pump your brakes a few times, make sure that you build that pressure back up because you will not have brakes the first few times that you pump it. So don't go for a ride, don't go out there and expect that it's gonna be all great. Just make sure you pump them, then go for a ride. Now let me tell you, it is hot today. <laughs> I am sweating like a pig. So, at least we are done. Everything is put together, the brakes are serviced, the brakes are lubed, everything is hopefully as it should be. Last thing left is to hop on, take it for a ride, a uh, short ride, because I gotta get some gas. And then I gotta go do a couple other things today. But let's go hop on, let's test it out, let's make sure that everything we did was done properly and that next time we actually wanna go for a real ride, everything's gonna work. So let me pack all this stuff up because I've got a little bit of a mess around me and I'll change and hop on the bike. Well, here comes the moment of truth. Downshifting ain't gonna do all the work. Oh yeah, they bite. They bite all right. So luckily, or not luckily, but <laughs> I knew what I was doing, but everything went back together as it should. Everything works as it should. I already got gas as you guys can tell. And as you guys can tell, as you guys can see, and yeah, everything uh, just works. So everything turned out great. Hopefully we don't have to change the brake pads anytime soon. But for those of you guys that do have to change your brake pads, now you know how, and it's not that hard. Honestly, the whole thing took me less than an hour to do both front and the back. And if I was replacing the pads, it would have been basically the exact same procedure. So it shouldn't take you guys more than about an hour and a half to two hours for your first time. And take your time, make sure you get everything right. Uh, make sure you tighten everything down, lube everything up properly, and you should be good to go. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around this long. Whoever is still here watching this video, you guys are the real MVPs. And drop me a comment and let me know how many of you guys there is because I know you guys don't all stick around. But that's all good because I make these videos for you guys. So watch what you want, use what you want out of it. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. So please consider subscribing, hit that like button and let me know what you guys want to see in the next vlog. But until next time, guys, I'm out. So, peace.